Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to do 6B, which is measures of variations. And as we do it, there are a couple of things that I want us to recall from last time that are going to be really helpful to us. The first one thing is when we talked about an outlier. What an outlier was, a data value that is much higher, much lower than the other values, and it can change the mean a lot more than it generally will affect the median or the mode. So this is something that we want to keep in mind. The other thing that we want to talk about is remember about symmetry, about symmetric versus skewed. We want to talk about that or remember that. And the fact that if we're skewed left or right, an outlier is going to be on the side where it's skewed. And this is measures of variation, so the other thing that I want us to talk about is variation, which is low variation, medium variation, high variation. And there was one other thing in here that I thought we might review at. but I can't think of what it is, so we'll go on and, and when we come across it, I'll take care of that. Okay, so we're going to talk about variation, which is how spread out the data is. Um, probably a word that you have heard before is um, the range of values. If you're talking about mean, median, and mode, it's not uncommon to, in that conversation, also talk about mode. I mean, excuse me, range. Okay, so, We looked at the distribution, and that gives us a big trend if we're looking at um, either a histogram or the general shape of the graph. But we want to look at quantitative measures of variation. So one of the things that we want to talk about, of course, is the range of values. So our range here is the difference between the highest and the lowest values. So we're going to have our, all of our data set up and we are going to have a highest value and we are going to have a lowest value. And if you subtract the maximum from the minimum or the minimum from the maximum, that's going to give you the range. Okay. So we want to know what the, how much difference there is between the highest and the lowest values. Then there are some numbers in between that we want to know. And I'm not going to do this in the order that they're given. I am going to do this in this order. So we've got our lowest value. We've got our highest value. Right in the middle, we have our median which is also called the middle quartile. And that is the median of the entire set of data. So it's, if you look at all the data points, this is the one that's in the middle. Remember, median is in the middle. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Then we're going to look at the lower quartile. And this is the median of the lower half. We are also going to look at the upper quartile, which is the median of the upper half. So there's our upper quartile. Now here's what this means. We know that if this is me the median then from here to here is half of the data, and from here to here is half of the data. Okay, we know that the median, you count your way in, and it's right there in the middle. We know that this is the lowest, this is the highest, we have our median in the middle, and notice we have our lower quartile here, 
and then our upper quartile here. Okay, what that means is the lower quartile is the median of the lower half. What that means is that 25% of your data points are here, 25% are here. Same thing here, your upper quartile is the median of the top half, which means 25% of the data is here and 25% is here. So what we have here is a graph where we have created what is called a box plot or a box and whiskers. Each whisker represents 25% 20, of the data is within between this number and this number, this number and this number. Then your quartile, lower quartile to your median has 25% of the data. Your median to your upper quartile has 25% of the data. Okay. Now it's called a box plot or you can call it a box and whiskers. Now notice these boxes are not the same width, these whiskers are not the same width. Because it's not halfway in between the graph, it's where the data points are. And you'll see when we, when we graph one here in a second. Okay, So we're going to put all this together and we are going to learn if we have been given a set of data, how we can create the five number summary and how we can create the box plot. Okay, all right, so we've got some data here. This is the samples of 15 commute times for ACC students to the Northridge campus back in the day when we actually got to go to a classroom. I don't know, some of you may miss that, some of you may not, I don't know. Okay, all right, so I've got all these data points. Okay. So what I have to do, where I start is I'm going to find, well, e the low and the high are easy enough. So I'm going to have the low value and the high value. Since these are already in order for me, I know my low value is 5 and my high value is 60. Now I want to find my median. So I am going to count my way in to the center and I find my median is right here. My median is 20. So what does that give me now? It gives me this data on the left and this data on the right. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on each side. So that is my median. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is find my lower quartile, which means I am going to not deal with this data right now. I am going to look at only this, and I am going to find the lower quartile, the median of this data. So if I count my way in, my lower quartile is that data value, which is 10. I will do that for the upper quartile. I will look at this half of the data and I will count my way in and I find that my upper quartile is 30. That is right in the middle there. And let me just go ahead and make sure that's all color coordinated. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. 25% of the data is between 5 and 10. 25 is between 10 and 20. Between 20 and 30. And between 30 and 60. And you can see it's evenly spaced. Now, these numbers are not evenly spaced, but these are the breaks that represents where the 25 goes. 
Okay, so let's create a box plot for the data. I know I need to go from 5 to 60, but I think I'll just go up by 10s each time. So I'll go up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Now you can do this however you want since you've got the five data points, but you'll notice at each of these there is a vertical line. There's a vertical line at each of the five number summaries. So I'm going to put a vertical line at five. I know it's right here. I'm going to put one at 10. I will put the median here at 20. I will put the upper quartile number at 30. And then I will put my maximum at 60. Okay, so what do I do with all of this? All right, well, from here, I know around between the upper and lower quartile, I'm going to create a box. And then from the lower quartile to the smallest value, create a whisker. From the upper quartile to the highest value, a whisker. Now notice again what this means. These are not necessarily the same size, but this means that 25% of the data is in here, 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. Now notice this whisker is a lot larger than this whisker. Why? Because 60 is an outlier. If I were to graph this data on a scatter, or not a scatter plot, but like as a histogram, and just draw its general trend, since most of the data is here, it would be skewed to the right. Since this is an outlier, it's going to be skewed in that direction, so it's going to be skewed right. Now, one of the things that we didn't do is find out what the range of values is. And, you know, that's real easy to do. If I want to find the range, it's just my highest minus my lowest, which is 55. Okay. All righty. So this is some data. On here, this is some real-life data about um, the. It's comparing speakers of parliament, either like a, a speaker in the house or a speaker of the senate, and in different regions of the world, and the difference between men and women in those positions. Okay. So what we're going to do is, for each of these, we are going to find the five-number summary for men and women. Okay, the first thing I also want to do here is I want to change one of these data values to three because having two of them the same, it really kind of messes things up. Okay, but if I, I need to go from low to high and I need to find the median, which means I need to put the values in order. In order. Okay, so for the men, the smallest value is 15, then 24, 38, 39, 51, and finally 54. Once I have them in order, I know my low value, I know my high value. They're just the ends. I can also go ahead and calculate the range. It's going to be 54 minus 15, which is 39. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but, you know, just keeping that in our mind. Okay, now I'm going to go straight to the middle. I'm going to find the median. Well, if I count my way in, 
my median is going to be the average of these two. So it is going to be 38 plus 39 divided by 2, which is 38.5. Okay, so now to find my lower quartile, I am going to find the median of these. So my lower quartile is right in the middle, and that's going to be 24. My upper quartile is going to be in the middle, the median of these three values. So my upper quartile is 51 and of course I can also do the low and the high okay okay let's do it th for the women as well I'm going to put them in order if I look at these since I changed the data point the values are 1 3 6 14 16 19. Now, I would recommend that you try this on your own. The low and the high are given to me. 1 and 19. Now, I can also here do my range. 19 minus 1 is 18. Now I can just thinking out and just thinking about this. If this range is bigger than this range, this has a bigger spread. This has more variability. Okay. All right. Let's look at the median next. The median is going to be the average of these two, and that gives me 20 divided by 2, which is 10. Then I look to the left, I look to the right, and these are a little bit easier since there's an odd number. The lower quartile here is right in the middle, so that's 3. The upper quartile is again right in the middle. The median in the middle is 16. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to plot both of these on the same box plot, and hopefully I can, well, I'll do the men, and then I can scoot it down and do the women. Okay, so my lowest value of all of these is 1. My highest is 54, so I think if I scale these by 5, that's enough. So let's go by 5, whoops, and let me show that, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Okay, that was plenty. All right, so I'm going to do a separate box plot so we can compare the two. Okay, so for the men, I know my low is 15. My lower quartile is 24, so that's just below 25. My median is 38.5, so that's going to be like right there. And you have to just make your best guess on that. My upper quartile is 51. And then finally, my max is 54. Now, what do I do with those? No matter how large they are, these three in the middle, I turn into a box. And then I do a whisker to the lower and the upper. And once again, remembering what that means. 25% of the data is in here. 25% is between 24 and 38 and a half. 25% is between 38 and a half and 51. And 25% is between 51 and 54. All right, let's repeat this and do it with the women. So my low value is 1. My lower quartile 
is 3. Well, they're close together. My median is 10. My upper quartile is 16. And my high is 19. Wow, you can see definitely a difference in the data here. But again, the same thing applies. 25% of the data is between 1 and 3, 25% between 3 and 10, 25% between 10 and 16, and 25% between 16 and 19. Okay. Now you can see this plot is a lot longer than this one. So this tells me if my range is 39 versus my range is 18. It has nothing to do whether it's to the left or the right. It's because this distance here versus this distance here. Okay, um, I think I'll quit here. I think we can do the next one in um, a reasonable amount of time, so let me stop here.